in a groundbreaking development for marine research. Scientists have developed an autonomous underwater robot fish. Four different species have fished in the tropical Pacific. In the icy waters off Japan's northern coast, a silent revolution is unfolding beneath the waves. Once dominated by human labor and instinct, Japan's fishing industry has now become a high-tech battleground where machines, sensors, and artificial intelligence work side by side with fishermen to harvest billions of squid and tuna every year. The traditional image of the lone fisherman guiding his boat under the moonlight has been replaced by fleets of robotic vessels, automated sorting systems, and AI-driven sonar that can locate entire schools of fish hundreds of meters deep. It's a breathtaking fusion of heritage and innovation, and a response to one of the toughest challenges Japan has ever faced, keeping an ancient way of life alive in a modern, mechanized world. Japan has been a fishing powerhouse for centuries. Its economy, cuisine, and culture are deeply tied to the sea. Tuna, squid, mackerel, and shrimp have long been staples of Japanese identity, sustaining entire coastal towns for generations. But in recent decades, things have changed dramatically. Overfishing, stricter international quotas, and a shrinking labor force have forced Japan's fishing industry to adapt or collapse. Young people are leaving fishing villages for the cities, and the average fisherman today is nearly 60 years old. With fewer hands to haul nets and process catches, technology became the only path forward. And that's how robots entered the scene. Not to replace the ocean's rhythm, but to ensure it doesn't stop. The transformation starts at sea. Modern Japanese fishing vessels look more like floating laboratories than traditional boats. Equipped with GPS navigation, satellite-linked sonar, and deep-sea cameras, they can scan vast areas of the ocean floor, identifying fish movement and density in real time. Onboard computers analyze the data, predicting migration patterns based on temperature, salinity, and even the moon's face. When a school of squid or tuna appears, Robotic winches deploy nets with surgical precision, minimizing bycatch and avoiding protected species. These smart nets adjust automatically, closing at the perfect moment to trap only the targeted fish. At the heart of these operations are AI systems trained on years of oceanic data. Japanese researchers have developed machine learning algorithms that recognize the subtle signatures of squid swarms, tiny pulses of movement captured by sonar, and distinguish them from other sea life. For tuna, the technology goes even further. AI-assisted drones and underwater robots trail the schools, guiding ships to optimal fishing zones and reducing wasted fuel. The result is astonishing efficiency. Some fleets have doubled their catch rates while cutting operating costs by nearly half, all while reducing their environmental footprint. But the automation doesn't stop once the fish are caught. The real marvel begins when the boats return to port. In coastal hubs like Hachinahe and Kagoshima, enormous robotic processing facilities handle thousands of tons of seafood daily. As the ships dock, cranes unload the catch into massive sorting lines. Each fish is scanned by 3D cameras that measure size, weight, and even surface texture. From there, robotic arms pick up individual tuna, placing them onto conveyor belts with near-perfect accuracy. These machines can handle up to 300 fish per minute, operating with precision that no human could sustain for long hours. In the squid processing plants, automation has reached near total dominance. Once, hundreds of workers spent their days cleaning, gutting, and slicing squid by hand, a labor-intensive job that was wet, cold, and exhausting. Now, robots equipped with high-speed blades and sensors do it faster and cleaner. A single machine can process over 1,000 squid per hour, removing the beak, eyes, and ink sack in one seamless motion. The squids are then flash frozen or vacuum sealed for export, often within hours of being caught. Japan exports thousands of tons of processed squid annually, much of it bound for China, South Korea, and the United States, where it's prized for its freshness and consistency. Even tuna, Japan's most revered fish, has entered the robotic age. Inside high-tech plants, massive bluefin tuna, some weighing over 600 pounds, are hoisted by cranes onto chilled platforms. Robotic saws make perfect cuts through the frozen flesh, slicing it into sushi-grade portions while minimizing waste. The process used to take teams of butchers hours to complete 
but automated systems now do it in minutes, guided by lasers that map the internal structure of each fish to maximize yield. Quality control robots use spectral imaging to evaluate the fat content and color of every cut, ensuring that only the best pieces make it to Tokyo's famous fish markets and Michelin star restaurants. What makes this system truly remarkable is its precision and sustainability. Japan's new wave of robotic fishing isn't about catching more, it's about catching smarter. Every net, every line, and every cut is monitored through digital tracking. The government's fisheries agency has partnered with tech firms to build nationwide databases that track each fish from ocean to plate. This traceability not only prevents illegal fishing, but allows consumers to scan a QR code at the supermarket and see where and when their fish was caught. It's a level of transparency that strengthens Japan's reputation for quality and ethics in seafood production. Still, the road to automation hasn't been smooth. Many older fishermen resisted the changes at first, skeptical that machines could replicate the instincts honed over decades at sea. For centuries, Japanese fishermen have relied on subtle signs, the glint of fish in moonlight, the movement of seabirds, the smell of salt in the wind. These traditions run deep, and the idea of replacing them with data and drones felt sacrilegious. But as labor shortages worsened and profits fell, the industry had no choice. Younger operators began embracing robotics not as replacements, but as tools to amplify their skills. Today, some of the most successful fishing cooperatives are led by families who've merged ancestral knowledge with advanced technology, using AI predictions alongside generations-old weather-reading techniques. In the massive coastal ports where these robots work, the scale is breathtaking. Entire warehouses hum with synchronized motion, machines gutting fish, washing conveyor belts, and stacking crates for export. Cold air blasts through stainless steel corridors, keeping the temperature near freezing. Workers oversee the process from control rooms lined with monitors, adjusting speeds, diagnosing mechanical issues, and ensuring no step goes wrong. The entire journey, from the ocean to the packaging line, can now take less than 12 hours. For consumers in Tokyo, New York, or Seoul, that means fresher, cleaner fish than ever before. Environmental impact remains a central concern. Japan has faced criticism in the past for overfishing, especially of tuna. The rise of automation has actually helped counter that problem. Because AI-driven systems can detect and identify specific species, boats are less likely to overfish or target endangered populations. Robots also allow for precise net deployment, reducing the destruction of coral reefs and bycatch of non-target species. Some experimental fishing robots even operate autonomously, unmanned surface vessels that harvest squid using light lures and return to port on their own, powered by solar energy. This new era of sustainable automation could reshape the global fishing industry, making Japan not just a leader in technology, but in ocean stewardship. Economically, the impact has been profound. The fishing sector, once struggling with declining labor and profits, has found new life. Productivity has surged, exports have grown, and Japan has maintained its dominance in global seafood trade. Robotic systems are expensive, some costing millions to install, but the return on investment comes quickly. Less waste, fewer labor shortages, and higher consistency mean that even small cooperatives can stay competitive in a global market increasingly driven by efficiency.